Welcome to P. Clark Calc Practical Calculus for a Busy Math Student. And in this video, we're going to take a look at an example of finding the area enclosed by a polar function. In this example, we're looking at it's called a rose graph. It's a polar function r equals 4 times the sine of 3 theta. And we're trying to find the area within one petal of this rose. And in order to do that, we're going to use the formula for finding the area contained inside of a polar curve. It's derived from the area of a sector of a circle, which simply enough is, is a equals one half theta times r squared. And so if we would, the difference here being that the radius is not constant, it's a function of theta. So if we just take one half r squared theta, and for each small change in theta, we replace that with d theta, we, we get our pretty simple formula actually in order to do this. So we're going to take one half the integral r squared theta d theta from alpha to beta. Uh, those are the bounds as functions of theta. So what we need to do here, if we, if we look at our graph for a second and say let's probably be simplest to, to get the this pedal over here, the one in quadrant one. What we need to do here then is to determine what are the bounds of theta for this graph. As we rotate from from zero, we can figure out pretty easily that this graph is at the pole at zero. But when does it return back to the pole and then close that first petal of that rose? And so in order to do that, we need to solve the equation here for being at the pole. So just like when we do areas with functions, sometimes the bounds will be given to us. Sometimes we need to Go ahead and find them as intersection points. So simply enough, we just have to figure out when is 4 sine of 3 theta equal to 0. It's a multiple angle case. So 3 theta is equal to 0 when the theta value is 0 plus any multiple of 2 pi, or add pi plus any multiple of 2 pi. Now we only need the first couple here in order to make this happen. So, so when we divide by, by 3 here, we find that the bounds for our integral are theta equals 0 and pi over 3. And, it, and so as we do that, we start at 0, we start rotating in a positive direction counterclockwise direction off the positive x-axis. And by the time we get to pi over 3 radians, the graph has gone out around that pedal and returned back to the, the to the pole. So, so that's part one of the problem is to figure out if, you, if it's not handed to you, what are the bounds of this integral? So now we can set this up and state that the enclosed region is 1 half times the integral from 0 to pi over 3 of the function 4 sine of 3 theta squared d theta. So if we can go ahead and find the antiderivative there and evaluate it, that's going to be our answer. So when we square the integrand function, the, uh, the, the polar function here, it's 16 sine squared 3 theta. So if we take the 16 out, that gives us the integral 8 times our integral of sine squared of 3 theta. Now, in this case, when you have a sine squared or a cosine squared as your integrand function, the way to get that antiderivative done is a power reduction formula. And for the sine squared, that power reduction is 1. If we have this as a sine squared of u, it's 1 minus the cosine of 2u over 2. So if we rewrite that, the so 1 half we're going to bring out. So this would be 4 times the integral of 1 minus the cosine, and we double the angle, so of 6 theta d theta. And that will allow us to get the antiderivative. So, so don't forget that power reduction formula anytime you have just a sine squared or a cosine squared function. And then we take the antiderivative with respect to theta, so this would be theta minus one sixth times the sine 
of 6 theta. And we're going from 0 to pi over 3. And then evaluate. So on the upper bound, we have pi over 3. Pi over 3 minus 1 sixth times the sine of 2 pi, which is, which is 0. And then on the lower bound, we have 0 minus 1 sixth times the sine of 0, so that's 0 on the lower. Which gives us the result that the enclosed region is 4 pi over 3. Now that's for one that's for one of the petals of the rose. Now, if you're working on larger regions or maybe a whole what the total area enclosed in a polar function, the key when you're doing area of a polar is to do as little as possible with the actual integral and then to use to use symmetry to find your final answer. So if I want to find the total area here, I know that by the nature of this graph that all these petals have the same area. So I just have to triple the area of the first petal. And we get 4 pi. So, so most of the important types of polar functions have some type of symmetry going through them. So you just kind of keep your eyes open there and see, you know, what's the, what's the least amount that I need to actually integrate through in order to use symmetry to take it the rest of the way when you encounter that case. But to answer the question posed in the exercise, if I wanted the area of the one petal, it's 4 pi over 3 using the area of polar functions formula. Pretty simple one, 1 half r squared theta d theta from alpha to beta. If you'd like to learn more about the calculus of polar functions or calculus in general, you can find more on my textbooks available for a nice price on Amazon. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you liked it. Until next time, I'm P. Clark.